Which coronavirus stimulus package is better? The one by the Democrats in the House or the one by the Republicans in the Senate? Let's find out. And first, we'll start with some of the things they have in common. For example, we have here from Politico that both of them want to give cash payments to Americans. They also both want to give help to hospitals and in some way, business relief, aid for airlines, and all of those things. They go about it in different ways, but the idea is similar. And generally speaking, the Democrats want to spend more because that's their MO. They generally want to spend more federal dollars compared to Republicans. One of the main differences not outlined in this article are some of the large restrictions imposed on small businesses by the House bill. Let's look at those. So I do want to point out I did not read the entirety of the bill proposed by the House, and that is because it is a whopping 1,400 pages long. And I don't really have time for that. I mean, admittedly, maybe I do right now because I'm kind of just sitting at home. But at the same time, there are much better ways to spend my time. However, what I did do is I looked at this article from the Daily Wire where they outlined some of the more ridiculous parts of the bill. And so I decided to check that against the actual bill and see if they were accurate. Every time I checked something, it was accurate. So I'm not just going off of this. I'll show you the actual text of the bill. So let's look at some of these ridiculous provisions. First, let's look at the restrictions that companies will have if they take any of the money the federal government is offering. Hiring. It says that grantees shall consider and hire a diverse staff, including by race, ethnicity, gender, and disability status, and that they will be required to submit a report to the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. This, to me, seems like affirmative action kind of on steroids, that the federal government is going to monitor who you are hiring, out their race, their sexuality, all of those things that shouldn't be nearly as important as if they're a good worker. And then they're going to require you to report to them to make sure you're doing everything okay. If that were the only restriction on businesses, maybe it wouldn't be such a big deal, but it's not. Some of the other permanent requirements of this bill include any business who takes money from the federal government will provide at least 14 days of paid leave to every worker in their employ. They will also be required to have a minimum wage of $15 an hour and will be required to limit their CEO pay with respect to their average worker. These are requirements that are completely permanent. If you take money from the federal government once to try and save your business, the federal government will come in and dictate to you how much you can pay everyone, who you have to hire, all of these things. These are completely permanent and that should not be acceptable. This is kind of like extortion. The federal government is saying, we'll give you this money business, but only if you do all of these things that we want, that don't have really anything to do with the coronavirus. Now, one thing that does have to do with the coronavirus is this restriction here, where they want to require that all businesses will maintain their same level of benefits and pay for every single employee throughout the entirety of the coronavirus emergency. That means they can't fire anybody, they can't furlough anybody, they can't decrease anyone's pay for the entirety of the coronavirus emergency. Which I understand, from a worker's perspective, that sounds pretty good. But imagine you're a small business owner. Maybe you employ, I don't know, 50 to 100 people. Do you really think you can somehow manage to pay all of them their entire pay when you're earning perhaps nothing? Because many businesses are completely closed at this point, and they may be for three or four months to come. You cannot afford that. That business will go bankrupt. So their options are bankruptcy or take money from the government and probably still go bankrupt, unless the government gives them exactly what they need to pay for every employee, in which case the federal government is basically just hiring everybody anyway, which isn't an ideal situation. Moving away from restrictions on business, let's look at some of the more obscure parts of this bill. Not only do they want to give $20 billion to the United States Postal Service so they can continue to run right now, which I guess kind of makes sense because we need to continue to mail things, but they also want to pay off the current debt of the Postal Service, up to $15 billion additional dollars. So that would be giving the Postal Service about $35 billion just because. They also want to forgive student loan debt of up to $10,000 per person which I guess will somehow help the coronavirus emergency, even though it says specifically here, they have up to 270 days after the last date of the coronavirus emergency, so it wouldn't really stimulate the economy during this emergency, so I don't really know where that's coming from. Also, it has virtually nothing to do with the coronavirus, but neither do these next two, where they want to require that states can have same-day registration and early voting all over the place. So basically, this is a list of things that Democrats have wanted to pass for some time, and they're taking this as an opportunity to try and get it passed. And that is the worst type of politics that there is. 
They are taking advantage of this really, really horrible and dire situation and trying to pass absolutely everything they've ever wanted. And it's absolutely disgusting. A lot of these things have really nothing to do with the coronavirus. So if this is a stimulus package trying to help out because of the coronavirus and trying to stimulate the economy, because that's what it's called, why would you include these provisions that have literally nothing to do with the economy? It makes no sense to me whatsoever. And if you're trying to help out small businesses, the way you don't do that is by requiring a $15 minimum wage because small businesses cannot pay that. We've seen this in New York and Washington and other places that have tried it. It just is not beneficial to small businesses. If you really care about helping small businesses, you would give them more money and not restrict them nearly as much as this bill is trying to do. Even if you agree with some of the policies they actually want to implement, you should probably be able to recognize that this is politicizing one of the worst events we've seen in recent American history. So if your options are the coronavirus stimulus package by the Democrats or the one by the Republicans, I would choose the one by the Republicans. And that's not just because I'm a Republican, but at the very least, it doesn't seem like they're trying to politicize this issue nearly as much as the Democrats are. Now, one claim I could not find that I was trying to look for was that if any business takes money, they would require that it has one third of its board elected by the workers themselves. And this may be in there, I just couldn't find it because at this point, the search wasn't really working super well. And again, it's 1,400 pages, so I was kind of limited in the research I could do. But if that is in there, that's another reason to not accept. So with all of this in mind, which stimulus package do you prefer? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe, like, and share this video or any of my other videos. I'd really appreciate it and it helps me out a ton. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.